Hi friends, you are welcome again to Montefiore Academy. In this session, I am going to teach on the two conditions for a body which is in equilibrium. Now, what are these two conditions? We say that for any body which is in equilibrium, it obeys two conditions. One condition is that the sum of clockwise moments is equal to the sum of anticlockwise moments. The second condition is that the sum of upward forces is equal to the sum of downward forces. Now, I have this diagram. This is a diagram of a metaura which is balanced horizontally. Uh, under this diagram, we see it is held by two forces, two upward forces, as you can see. Also, it carries three downward forces, which is force U, W, and Z. So, I'm going to use this diagram to elaborate these two conditions. Let us start elaborating the first condition that the sum of clockwise moments is equal to the sum of anticlockwise moments. Now, to deduce clockwise moments and anticlockwise moments from this diagram, you have to, to see, to look where uh, to look where the nature of the diagram. And in this diagram, we don't have the turning point. We don't have a pivot. So if we don't have a pivot, but you have the upward forces, you see we have two upward forces, you take just one force as the turning point. So the point where a single force among these two upward forces acts is taken as a turning point. Now let us choose point P as the turning point, but the other one can decide to choose point Y as the turning point, and the answers which will be obtained will be the same. Now take, take point P, take point P, to be the turning, the turning point. Now let us see the sum of clockwise moment. Sum of clockwise moment will be made by those forces which will be moving uh, in a clockwise direction towards the turning point. Now, if you remember, the moment is taken as the product of any force times its perpendicular distance. So here we are going to start uh, looking for the sum of clockwise moment. So here, all of the downward forces will be moving in the clockwise direction. As you see, if you take force U, W, and Z, and uh, they are moving towards the turning point P, they will be moving this way, this direction. They will be moving this direction, as you see. They, move in, they will be moving this direction, even you will be moving this direction. As they move, they move towards the turning point. So they move this way, they move this way. This is clockwise direction. So these three forces will give us the clockwise moments. Now let us start with the first clockwise moment due to force U. It will be force U times its perpendicular distance, which is the distance from where U acts to the turning point P. This is distance F. Now it will be U times F. We are going to add the moment due to force W. The moment due to force W is equal to the particular force times its perpendicular distance. The perpendicular distance of force W, it is, it is measured from where W acts to the turning point. So from W, from point W to P. Here, the distance between is distance G plus distance F. So it will be W times G plus F. Now, a third moment, a third clockwise moment is due to force Z. Force Z, uh, the perpendicular distance of force Z, it, it means that the distance from where Z acts to the turning point. So it is distance E, as you see, from here up to here, up to where P is. Now it is distance E. Now it will be Z times E. Now we are through with the sum of clockwise moment. Let us see sum of anticlockwise moment. Uh, first of all, before determining the sum of anticlockwise moment, let us recognize the forces which move. Let us recognize the forces which move in anticlockwise direction. We have only one force which moves in anticlockwise direction from our diagram setup. As our diagram here, uh, the anticlockwise, the force which moves in anticlockwise direction is only for C Y. As you see, for C Y, if it is rotated towards the turning point, it will be moving this way. It will be moving this way. It will be moving this way as it points upward. So it will be moving this way towards. So it will be moving this way towards the turning point. This is anticlockwise direction, as you see. This way, anticlockwise direction, anticlockwise direction due to force y. Now, 
we and kuroka sum of kuroka's moment will be due to force y times its perpendicular distance from where y acts to the turning point so it is distance e from here up to here distance e now it will be equal to y times e now this is the sum of anti clockwise moment let's see across our diagram do we have any extra force which moves anti clockwise the answer is no we don't have any because we are through with these three forces they are moving in a clockwise direction but we are made with only y which is when rotated uh, towards p we get it moving in anti clockwise direction now we are through so according to the first condition the first condition of a body in equilibrium it tells that the sum of clockwise moment is equal to the sum of anti clockwise moment now if the sum of clockwise moment is equal to the sum of anti clockwise moment now uh, now sum of clockwise moment is equal to the sum of anti clockwise moment so uf uf plus uf plus w w times g plus f plus ze will be equal to y e this is according to the principle of moment and it is the first condition for the body which is in equilibrium that the sum of clockwise moment is equal to the sum of anti clockwise moment also according to the second condition for the body in equilibrium we say that the sum of upward forces is equal to the sum of downward forces now it means that the sum of upward forces we have for p and for y so sum of upward forces will sum of upward forces upward forces we are going to have force p plus force y now let us see sum of downward forces sum of downward downward forces sum of downward forces we are going to have force u plus force w plus force z now we have these three forces acting downward so according to the second condition for a body in equilibrium sum of upward forces is equal to the sum of downward forces now p plus y will be equal to u plus w plus z according to the second condition for the body in equilibrium this is the way we are through in elaborating the two conditions for the body which is in equilibrium that the sum of clockwise moment is equal to the sum of anti clockwise moments and the sum of upward forces is equal to the sum of downward forces i hope the idea i hope this idea is clear to you so after this idea let us now solve the real example which show these two conditions for the body in equilibrium you are welcome for this example let us see our example uh, our example states that a uniform bar AB of height 5 meter weighs 60 newton. The bar is supported at a horizontal position by two vertical strings X and Y. If string X is 0.60 meter from A and string Y is 1.8 meter from B, find the tension in the strings. Now as our question states we have to find the tension uh, in string x and y first of all let us see the solution for this question by starting with the diagram of this bar a b bar a b it is said that it is uniform it is uniform means that it has equal magnitude at each point now let us see the way it will look like now we have one end a and another end b and we are told that the weight of this bar is 60 newton when you are given the weight of a body which is uniform it means that that weight should act at its center so it means from the center it is where the weight of this bar acts now the weight of 60 60 newton acts at its center as you see meaning that from the center to each end it is 
2.5 meter is the total distance of the the bar is the total distance of the whole bar is 5 meter now let us see the way we distribute these various distances first of all let us allocate these two strings string x is 0 0.6 meter from the end a now from the end a up to 0 0.6 0 0.6 meter it is where we fix string x now this is string x uh, also string x also let us fix string y string y is 1.5 meter uh, string y is at a distance of 1.8 meter from end b now from end b uh, about 1.8 meter it is where we fix string y string y now string y string y is fixed at this distance uh, mean from here 1.8 meter up to the end b and string x we have said it is 0 0.6 meter from the end a as you can see now we are meant with the distance between these two strings now let us see we've said that the its weight acts at the center so it means that from one end up to the center is 2.5 meter and t the same from another end up to the center 2.5 meter is the total distance of this bar is 5 meter so if from the end a up to the center is 2.5 meter and up to the string from the end a is 0 0.6 now to get the distance from the center up to where string x is is 2.5 meter minus 0 0.6 where we get whereby we get 1.9 meter 1.9 meter so this is the distance between the center of the bar up to the string x now what is the distance between the center of the bar up to string y is equal to 2.5 minus 1.8 as you know from the center up to the end is 2.5 and from the from, from the string y from string y up to from string y up to the end b is 1.8 so it means that to get the distance from string y up to the center is equal to the total distance from the center up to the end minus 1.8 which is 0 0.7 0 0.7 0 0.7 meter now this is the way the diagram will look like this is string x this is string y so here uh, what is required is to calculate the tension x and the tension y mean the tension in string x and the tension in string y so here we are going to use the two conditions for a body in equilibrium as we have said the two conditions the first one is the sum of clockwise moment is equal to the sum of anticlockwise moment and the second condition for the body in equilibrium is that the total upward forces is equal to the total downward forces now let us start with the first condition that the sum of clockwise moment is equal to the sum of anticlockwise moment to know that first of all as this bar is in equilibrium let us uh, find out the turning point here we are not given the pivot so if you are not given the pivot uh, you and you are given more than one uh, upward forces uh, just choose one upward force uh, choose a point whereby uh, one of the two upward force acts to be the turning point now let us take point x to be the turning point so let's let uh, let x be the turning point let x be the turning point now if x is let to be the turning point so all of the remaining forces will be rotated towards x which is the turning point now the remaining forces we have 60 newton and force y so force y and 60 newton are going to be turned about point x now let us start let us start with sum of clockwise moment sum of clockwise moment let us recognize which of the two forces rotate clockwise this force is 60 newton 
when it is turned towards point x is the turning point it means that it will be moving this way it will be rotating this way so this is totally this 60 newton is it rotates this way this way it, this towards the turning point this gives a clockwise moment so uh, the clockwise moment will be due to force 60 newton now it will be 60 newton 60 newton times its perpendicular distance its perpendicular distance is the distance from where our force acts to the turning point now it is where 60 newton from the center up to point where string x is fixed this is 1.9 meter this is 1.9 meter so this will give us the sum of clockwise moments as we don't have any other force which rotates it clockwise so now let us see what are you going to get 60 times 1.9 when you take 60 times 1.9 uh, 60 times 1.9 you are going to get 114 114 newton meter uh, now let us see the sum of anticlockwise moment sum of anticlockwise moment uh, will be due to uh, force y. This force y, the force mean which acts in string y, will reach to the anticlockwise moment as it will be moving as it points upward, so it will be moving this way towards the turning point. As it moves towards the turning point, is, which is x, so it will be moving this way. So it will be force y, it will be y times its perpendicular distance. The distance from where y, where y acts to the turning point. Now, is the distance which is obtained between y and x, which is 0 0.7 plus 1.9. Now, this will be 2.6 meter. 2.6 meter. Now, we are going to apply the principle of moment. The principle of moment is such that the sum of clockwise moment is equal to the sum of anticlockwise moment. The same as this is the first condition for the body which is in equilibrium that the sum of clockwise moments is equal to the sum of anticlockwise moments. Now, the sum of clockwise moments we have obtained 114 newton meter, uh, while the sum of anticlockwise moment we have obtained 2.6 meter times y. So here, here we are going to we are going to obtain for y is here we are going to obtain for y by dividing uh, by 2.6 meter both sides. So we have 2.6 meter times y is equal to 114 newton meter. So by dividing by 2.6 meter by 2.6 meter both sides, you are meant with the y. Now our y will be equal to our y will be equal to. We are going to get we are going to get 114 over 2.6. You are going to get 43.85. 43.85. This is uh, this is Newton as meter and meter cancel out. So we are made with 43.85 Newton. This is the value of force y. Now after getting tension y. After getting the tension in string y, what is next? The next is to find the tension in string x. To get the tension in string x, to get the tension in string x, we are going to apply the second condition for the body in equilibrium that the sum of upward forces is equal to the sum of downward forces. Now, when we apply it, uh, the condition that sum of upward forces is equal to the sum of downward forces. Now, if so, let us recognize the the upward forces. The upward forces we have here, we have two forces x and y. Uh, the two for are uh, the only two forces which up which point upward. Now, sum of upward forces we are going to have x plus y is equal to sum of downward forces. Sum of downward forces. The downward forces which we have, we have only a single force, which is sixty newton. Now will be equal to 60 newton as you can see. Now after putting is equal to 60 newton, but remember we have already obtained the force y. If we have already obtained the tension in string y, let us 
and substitute it into this equation. We are going to have Fc plus 43.85 newton is equal to 60 newton. So to get force Fc, to get the force in the Fc, we are going to subtract 43.85 both sides. So we are going to have Fc will be equal to 60 newton minus 43.85 newton like this. So this is the way it looks. Now let us finalize this one. So we are going to get, uh, you are going, we are going to take 60, 60, we are going to take 60 minus 43, 43.85. We are going to have 16.15, 16.15 Newton. So this is the tension in string X. So here we conclude by saying that the tension, the tension, the tension in string, in string, in string x and y and y is the tension string x and y is 16.15 newton and and 43.85 newton respectively 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 meaning that the tension in string X is 16.25 and that in string Y is 43.85. This is the end of our example. So I hope you have enjoyed the lesson because it was very, very clear. And I take this chance to thank you for attending today's session. I welcome you in the next session. Have a nice moment. Bye.